So this one's gonna be a little bit weird. I recently came into possession of two two pound blocks of processed American cheese of a slightly inferior quality. This is basically craft Singles in block form. And of course, I had no idea what to do with this much cheese. So I reached out to Reddit Cooking, and it seems like the consensus is to make some sort of cheese dip with it. So I ended up making three very different types of cheese dip. But before we start, let's deal with the cheese. Now, obviously some of the comments in Reddit were uh, just throw out the cheese because it's useless and nobody wants American cheese. That's not always the case. You know, this stuff is incredibly good at melting. Um, it's really good on top of a cheeseburger because it doesn't take away from the flavor of the beef. It's just kind of cheese texture. There are better quality versions of this. If you want a sandwich and you want a little bit of a cheese flavor, less of this weird gooey texture, uh, then you go with something that's a little bit less processed a little bit more actual cheese. But in this case, uh, this is basically like Velveeta or Kraft Singles. So it's got a lot more filler in it that is specifically geared towards melting. To ease the melting a little bit more, I'm gonna cut it into centimeter cubes, or should I say half inch cubes, because this is American cheese. And the first dip I'm gonna be making is a taco cheese dip. This is sort of a hybrid between two recipes, one from Guy Inova and one from Asian Dal. The ingredients are basically the same for both of these, the only difference being mostly technique. So into a large frying pan over medium-high heat, I'm going to throw a few tablespoons of oil, along with 500 grams of ground turkey. You could also use ground beef or ground chicken for this. It doesn't really matter too much because we'll be browning this meat until it's basically just a texture. So I let it brown on one side while chopping it up into little granules and constantly flipping it over and making sure it gets browned all the way through. Once it's brown on all sides and breaks apart easily into little tiny pieces, I'm gonna add in some taco seasoning. And while I was in the store, along with the old El Paso and Ortega taco kits, I saw this Taco Bell kit. So I figured what better time to try it out, since I don't really do white people taco night. So in the box, you'll find 12 hard shells, the taco seasoning packet, and a large pouch of Taco Bell's mild sauce. It's kind of weird that they didn't include the actual packets that you find in the stores, uh, so you can have a variety of different heat levels. Anyway, I'll dump in most of the seasoning packet, basically pour in as much as you think it needs. This is meant for like two pounds of meat, but we're gonna be adding the cheese to this later, so you might as well over-season it here, that way it balances out with the cheese. Now, Guy Inova uses chili powder, onion powder, and garlic powder before adding in the taco seasoning packet. But to be honest, the taco packet has chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder in it, so I figured why not make things easier for myself. Mix that in thoroughly, and oddly enough, the seasoning made the taco meat look uh, pretty appetizing, actually. It had kind of this reddish-brownish hue to it. Next up, the recipe called for diced tomatoes and green chilies. They didn't mention by brand, but Rotel is the classic, so I'm going with that. I'll just dump that right in, mix it until it's well distributed, and then we can go in with the cheese. I'll throw in half a block of that American cheese. And here's another place where Gaia Nova differs from Asian Dal. He melts his cheese and milk together separately and then adds it in. I don't really see that as necessary. As you'll see here, the meat kind of creates a buffer for the cheese so that it slowly melts and integrates into the mix. And as that melts, if it's looking a little bit thick, we can add in a few splashes of milk. This is about 125 mils. Mix it in thoroughly. And we should be good to go. I topped it off with a handful of cilantro. And this basically tastes like those nachos that you get at a sports bar. Not too bad, not amazing. Two things that were lacking were salt and acidity. The cheese ended up being low sodium, and the seasoning packet only had 300 milligrams of sodium, which considering ramen has 1200 milligrams or something like that, I'm pretty surprised. So I really should have seasoned with some salt. And for acidity, I guess the Rotel doesn't really have those pickled chilies in there. I didn't taste it on its own, so I'm not sure. But I think throwing some pickled jalapenos in there might brighten things up a little bit and balance out all the heavy flavors. All right, the next recipe comes from Sleepy Bear 33669111, and it's a bacon cheeseburger dip. So obviously we're starting off with bacon. I've got about 200 grams of bacon here that I'm gonna dice up. And add to a pan over medium-high heat. I'll keep stirring that around until it browns on all sides and the fat renders out. 
And we really want a nice crispy texture here so that it stands out in the dip. So once it looks nice and brown, I'll scoop it out, put it off to the side, and in that remaining fat, I'm gonna brown 500 grams of beef. Same deal here, I'm gonna chop it up as it browns, and eventually it will turn into little granules of overcooked beef. I mean, look at this stuff, it looks like cereal at this point. It's very strange. I'll save that off to the side, and rather than dirtying another pan, I'll throw in half a block of that American cheese, as well as about 250 milliliters worth of cheddar cheese that I'll dice up. This will just add more cheesy flavor to the mix. Melt those all together. And again, add in some splashes of milk as needed. Keep stirring until it gets melty and gooey, and eventually turns into more of a sauce. Again, that's the amazing thing about this processed cheese. Like, you don't need anything else to make a cheese sauce. Now I'll add back in the bacon. And the beef. And as you add things in, it kind of cools the cheese down and gets a little bit rubbery. So I added in some more milk to thin it out. And the recipe calls for a few tablespoons of hot sauce. I'm using El Yucateco Green, which color-wise, not such a great idea. But in terms of flavor, I love the acidity that it has. Next I'll add in some canned diced tomatoes that I've drained out of their water. Mix those in thoroughly. Add another splash of milk to thin it out again. And we're ready to serve. And yeah, this one tastes like bacon cheeseburgers. The bacon comes through, the beef comes through, the cheddar definitely adds another dimension to this. And even though the hot sauce makes it a little bit more taco-y, it definitely doesn't take away from the dish. Now finally coming from user Da Maestro Bowl, we've got a cheesy bean dip that consists of refried beans and cheese. So into a skillet over medium-high heat, I'm gonna throw a few tablespoons of oil. I'll mince up a quarter of an onion. Throw that in and saute it for a few minutes until it turns translucent. Then I'll go in with a can of black beans that I've drained most of their liquid out of. I'm gonna reserve a little bit of it. That'll give us some buffer so as we're cooking the beans they don't get too thick. I'll throw those in with the onions, stir them around, season with some salt, bring them up to a simmer, and then you could use a stick blender, but I'm gonna use a potato masher for this just to get a little bit more of a chunky texture. Just keep on mashing until they turn to the texture that you like. Keep simmering them and stirring them for another five or 10 minutes until they're fully cooked through and set them aside while we work on the cheese. So back into a frying pan over medium low heat. I'm gonna throw another half a log of cheese and stir that around until it melts. Like I said, you really don't need anything to make a cheese sauce from this stuff. As you can see, it's just getting gloopy and then it's getting smooth. <laughs> Look at that, that's wild. And now we'll add in our refried beans. Stir them in well. <laughs> Look at that color, that is wild. Next up we need a can of jalapenos, which I did not know that's what nachos actually are. Well, I guess you could call this a nacho dip as well. I'm gonna dice those so you don't scoop up an entire ring of jalapeno. Mix them in, and it's best to taste it to see if you have enough. I definitely didn't, so I added twice as much, but it's really up to you how much heat and acidity you want. And this one is probably my favorite. Tastes the healthiest, even though I know it's not. The flavor of the refried beans goes so well with the cheese, and those pickled jalapenos just add a really nice, bright acidity to this. 
Plus, it's vegetarian as far as I can tell, and you could probably even do a vegan version with that tapioca cheese if you want to eat that much tapioca. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sure, these are three very different cheese dips, but what do they taste like when they're mixed together? Well, I will tell you, they taste pretty good, actually. All those flavors kind of go well together. Tacos, bacon, beans, and cheese, they all mesh really well together, but I do think the beans overwhelm this a little bit. So maybe add one part of the bean dip to two parts each of the taco dip and the bacon cheeseburger dip. That way you can really taste the taco and bacon shining through. But then again, I can't really recommend that you make any of these because that would require you to buy a metric fuckton of processed American cheese, which I don't think you should do. 